Okay, but we, what I was asking is, where are you going to be leaving off uh, with your speech? Well, I'm going to start with a brief introduction of Oxford, of the way the university works, and of the society, and a bit about Oxford's history. Um, so that's going to be things that the Oxfordians already know, but hopefully that will be quite new to the people um, listening. And, and then after that, I'm going to talk a bit about um, Oxford and its relations with Italy. So the curious Italian influence on Oxford. Now, oh. Oxford's, or Oxford, in a sense, in the past, was always England's portal to Italy. Now, what, what I mean by this is Italian innovations and Italian influence, especially in the Renaissance, tended to come through Oxford and then hit the rest of England. Interesting. And Interesting. Indeed. And, and, this, and this lasted for a long time because then, of course, there was the Grand Tour. Oxford students were very encouraged to go on the Grand Tour. And, and so this they, goes back through always? This when? goes back to a quite a long time, yes. So it would go back to um, about the, 16th, the 1600s. It'd okay. go back to about 1600s. And the Grand Tour was like what? Well, it, it was um, a tour that every English gentleman should do. And it usually included um, going to Paris, Venice... Florence, uh, Tuscany, and Rome, and, and Naples as well, and often the rest of Italy, sometimes Greece and um, parts of um, the Byzantine Empire or the Ottoman Empire. Did they have a, so many weeks, a week, several weeks? It would vary. It could even take years. It could take years. And, um, and it, was part of, it was seen as part of an essential, uh, an essential part of, of the Englishman's uh, education. So, um, Was it at all in a structured sabbatical course or it was just strongly recommended you do it and did they come back to report their findings or were they already graduated well um well i'll discuss this uh, in the conference okay. because it's very interesting um it, it's, it, it also it, this links to a funny way that oxford courses the course structure developed so um as you know we now have this bachelor's degree and then afterwards you would have uh, your master's after that um well um Oxford um, has this funny system where um, in the, you, you do your bachelor's in, in these three years, and then afterwards, three years after that, they automatically give you a master's. Automatically? Give it to you? Uh, yes, so any Oxford bachelor's, seven years after matriculation, so three years after graduation, he would get, um, three or four years, actually, it depends, he would get, um, he would get his master's. Now... Um, this, uh, th this, this, this situation evolved because um, traditionally the, the degree it was first conceived at the University of Bologna as something that, 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 that would make you a doctor. It would last for minimum five years, but usually up to even nine or ten, and, and you would become a doctor. There was no intermediate degree. And, um, and in Italy and in France, before doing your degree, you would do what is called the baccalaurea, which then became the bachelor's. The baccalaurea was kind of like a pre-degree or a kind of half-degree. So you do the baccalaurea, and then you do the laurea, the full degree. And um, now Oxford, of course, gained this tradition. Uh, this tradition came to Oxford through, um, through these other, um, from, from, from the University of Bologna and the University of Paris. And, um, but it changed it. In Oxford, they, um, um, they, uh, they, for curious historical reasons, they, um, they abolished the title of, of doctor. And... Um, um, and they just kept the title of master, but um, and, and and they decided to make the, the degree last actually three years. Okay. So in theory, you you spend three years studying in Oxford, and then three years out in the field. That's right. On a sabbatical, yes. but there is an accountability to make sure you follow through. No, this is the thing. It was very free. So okay. the three years in Oxford were controlled, okay. and you get your bachelor's, you'd be examined, and then you do the grand tour. And then you'd come back from the grand tour, and then you'd you'd get your masters. So Did you know wrap up presentation or no? Okay. no not okay. that I know of. M okay. Mind you, I'm no expert. Sure, sure. I'm no expert. It could be. Um, is it still this way now? No, it's not. No, no, it is no. because um, well, you get your masters after four years, but you're not. A, you know, <laughs> I don't think many people go on the grand tour. <laughs> so you do three years of That's study. Right. Yes. And then you have one year of life experiences out of school, um, and then at four years you get. The bachelors. Well, um, you do three years of study, yes. and one year after that you get your bachelors. Okay. And then after three years you get your masters, but you're not. Oh, you. Oh. You still get the masters, yes, but you're not obliged to. Um, you're not. You're no longer. You know, they they don't. Um, the grand tour is no longer something that is done. Oh, that's. Oh yeah. Okay. And nor are you. You know, nor nor is it suggested that you should take a, a year off. You know, you can start working immediately after your bachelors. 
that's uh, the grand tour is a thing of the past now. Okay. Okay. Mm. But I'll talk about that because okay. the grand tour was a method. It was basically one of the ways that Italian influence came back to England. Okay. Do you have any idea what year the grand tour concept started to diminish? Diminish because I will take that information and I will. And it was in the twentieth century. I'm not exactly sure when. So you don't know if it's the mid or late 1900s. Not entirely sure. No. Okay. But I'm sure that this is very easy to find out when the okay. Grand Tour. Okay. When the, when grand, the grand Tour ended. Yeah. Yeah. And because um, what I would look at then is how that attitude might have influenced. Oh, it would have. It would have. The pre-Raphaelites. These were all people who would have gone on the Grand Tour. These are all people who would have seen these paintings. That's why you know they want to hark back to the age of. Uh, of medieval art, it's because they, you know, they've seen it. They've seen it, they've compared it to Renaissance art, and perhaps there was something about, you know, Frangelico which struck them that they thought was no longer present in, you know, the Sistine okay, Chapel. Okay, go ahead and put down Frangelico, just because these will be my notes later. Um, what I did see is that they kind of put their foot down with the mannerism. It goes back to Raphael. Raphael is in the Renaissance, the High Renaissance, they wanted pre, but you're saying they wanted to go back as far as to this stage. Well, I think so. Mind you, I'm no expert. Okay, that's where I'm, I'm going to expert. do my research. We're going to learn this yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. No, this is the thing. I, I'm not, unfortunately, not an expert. No, so. no, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. I just want to make sure we, I get accurate. Okay. So, um, the process. Let's talk a little bit about the process of your group that's jurying. You each get your own ballot, I assume, for, mm -hmm. you know, first, second, and third place for painting, sculpture, um, uh, drawing. drawings, and yes. then some other mixed medium. Indeed. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, are you thinking that you were all sent out? Is the committee you said a five to seven? It's about, it'll be about five, yeah. Five, okay. You all go out independently, mm -hmm. is from what I understood. Yes, we'll go out independently together as well. And we'll... make your initial decisions. Go That's ahead. right, yes. Well, so uh, normally the Oxford jury... Um, works in an ind yes, each one, they can talk, uh, they can discuss, but ideally each person should bring their own independent judgment. And then when they're all brought together... They're brought together numerically. So, um, so we tend not to have the process of discussion, uh -huh. where they discuss and they decide on a first second. They're brought together numerically, so... If, if I put the same person down and you put the same person down, that's right, yeah. they're kind of like slide them in. Indeed, yes, they're, they're okay, assigned a, a kind of pointage. So okay. if, you, if, if you put, so you can, you, put, you have five slots, for example, for the prize in drawing, and the first person will get five points, the second will get four, and the, th the third will get three, and so on. So it's, um, yeah, so it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a bit different to the normal jury. It's, it's, not, it's, quite, it's not quite the okay. same jury process. When we get past that I put down the same name, you put down the same name, so they get pushed up in the points, we move all of those off the table, and we're now left with all our other individual choices. What does that forum look like? Um, we've, we've, all the ones that we agreed to agree on, we, they go and take their positions, but we still have more slots for winners. And I put down five that you didn't put down, and she put down five that we didn't put down. Yes, okay. Is that how we start to present? Well, if, if in the event that uh, some of the slots are not filled, Ah. Now, I think this normally doesn't happen. Oh, it doesn't? No, interestingly, it Because there's a lot of overlap. Uh, indeed, yes. Usually they... Um, That's not interesting. It's interesting, yes. But that... Um, I've... Um, it's not often... You know, there are only three slots. So, First, um, second, third, fourth, That's right, yes. So it's not, it's not that often that... Um, usually... So you're saying if there's five people, as soon as we have any duplication of names among the five, we know they go in the bucket... And so usually within five, you and somewhere in this group, we're going to hook up and those by elimination move. That's interesting. That's interesting. Um, yes. In the event that there is a slot unfilled. Yes. Because we have a large number of people with equal pointage. Then we would just ask them to, um, to re-vote again, just, but just, though, just on those who, um, who have okay. equal pointage and decide. Among Let's them. say among the five, we're able to f fill three slots or even four slots. Well, everybody is, every uh, jury member is obliged to choose five. Five? For each prize. And okay. put them in order. Okay. Even though 
the prizes are only first, second, that's and third. Right, yes. So there's so, a greater chance of overlap in every category. That's right. So if you put someone as fourth, and you know there, um, that will give a, that will give that person a point. So if you put that person as fourth, and um, that will help. Yeah. So um, so it's pretty unlikely that the slots will be unfilled. I got you. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yes. Right. No, it's, a, it's a very clear, simple numerical system. Whoops! Look at that.